Second half about to get underway. A lot to like about uh, a number of players and good systems from both sides. The bouncing has been a real issue so far. Oh, it's just warming into season. the bouncing this year. And that wasn't a great one. Dawson Simpson's follow-up work was good. Ferrito was flashing the ball around a little bit. Good play again from the Cats. Guthrie gets it forward. And the mark taken by Mitch Brown. He's moved quite well through the first half. This will be a tight kick. Doesn't look like we're going to get any rain. Hopefully it stays away. As Mitch Brown comes in. Not the contact he was after. It's worked over for a behind, or in fact out of bounds. What about Shane Kirsten? Well, there's a lot of talk about him. He might have made it to boo in a final yes. last year. He's had a few injury problems over the summer. What sort of player is he? Well, I I'm going to say that I haven't, I mean, I haven't seen a lot of, uh, of him in the VFL. I think the only... He's not overly tall in terms of being a you know, genuine key position player. So you always, that's always a test, I think, at top AFL level for those forwards that aren't, you know, 6'3 or 6'4. So, but maybe as that third forward or maybe with Brown, they could both potentially fit in into the same forward line, depending on who else was playing. But uh, really good form in the back half of last year in the VFL. Really, really good form and, and deserves a crack at it. So I'm sure if he's fit and, and comes back and... Um, Kick some goals early in the VFL and he'll get his chance. So the Roos have worked the ball to half back nicely from Wood, off to Harvey, off to Wells, back to Harvey. Oh, handball just a little bit behind Big Curry and the Cats. Plenty of numbers around the footy. Grabbed by Johnson. Put a ball in the middle to Caddy, who started this game really well. Now he's got Big McIntosh drifting forward. It's a good mark from McIntosh. Looked like Hanson was going to get there, but he put the big arms up and took the mark just inside the 50. He was, there, he was there for a long time. It took it, Caddy a little while to spot him, but uh, it's a good mark, wasn't it? Well, it's a good, strong mark. Kicked the goal in the opening turn with a, an interesting kick. Wobbled through, but uh, it is great to see him back out there, of course. No games last year. He's played just eight games in the last three years, so had a terrible run. So from just outside 50, makes good contact. He's just going to fall short. Simpson's there. Couldn't quite take the mark off hands and through for a behind. So the Cats... Back in front by that solitary point. 7-6-48, North Melbourne 7-5-47. Just three minutes into this third term. Yeah, so, good second quarter by the Roos to get them in front at one stage. And then level at half time. Strong mark taken by Billy Smets. I guess another question about Smets is, again, where will he actually play? Does he play the defensive role that we're seeing him play tonight? Or does he play forward... As Hawkins comes out, got his judgment right that time. Chris Mark, and he'll line up for goal in just a moment, looking for his third. I thought, he, as you mentioned, he, he looked—he was playing some pretty good footy early last year, and, and mainly as a forward. Yeah. And I thought, with Chapman going, that was the real opportunity for him to cement a spot up there. He's probably one of those players that doesn't necessarily get a lot of possessions, and whether that's something he wants to really amp up, or whether he's always going to be that you know, 15 possession player who kicks a couple of goals. It'll be interesting to see. But Hawkins. Right over the footy. Coming in for his third. Not an issue at all. And the Cats get the first one of the third. And we're seeing Geelong now go to a seven-point lead. As we're joined by Alan Christensen, who's uh, joined us in the box here. Unfortunately for him, he's on the sidelines for good person, portion of the first half of the year, but uh, we're lucky enough to have him with us here on the, the North and Geelong website, so welcome to you, Alan. How you going, mate? Yeah, good, mate. How are you? I'm good. Enjoying a good game of footy. It's been uh, reasonably high scoring and uh, entertaining so far from both teams. Yeah, the boys having a real good crack at it, I guess. It's the uh, last uh, match we can get in before the season starts, so um, yeah, they're having a good crack at it. I know you uh, obviously haven't had the pre-season you were, you were after, but um, what's the general feel been like around the, around the club? Yeah, we're really excited about this year. Um, I think it's been pretty well documented that we've lost a lot of experience um, out of our team over the last couple of years. And um, you've got blokes like Cam Guthrie, Lincoln McCarthy out here tonight, Josh Cuddy, he gets ball now. But um, yep. yeah, I think we're, we're really pumped about this year coming and um, I hope it sets it up for the future. Well, all three of those guys you mentioned, they're involved in that passage of play and then uh, Jordan Murdoch gets on the end of it. Tell us about McCarthy because he's, he's been injured for... 
a few years and obviously he'd be jumping out of his skin now. Yeah, he's a great athlete. Um, he's a football smart to second and none at the club and um, I think we're going to see a lot of freaky things from him because he can do some uh, special stuff. He's, we've seen it out in the track and um, I guess having that uh, setback that yeah. he's had, um, yeah, I think he's, he's round and going. He's a very, very good player. Murdoch puts it through, and so Geelong have kicked the first two goals. What, what's the latest with you then? Yeah, uh, all going well so far. So um, had that little uh, disc bulge removed. Uh, prognosis, I think, 12 weeks, but uh, it's been three weeks to, to today. Um, all going well. Uh, back walking really freely, uh, no pain. So just got all about um, doing my rehab and all that right. And uh, yeah, hopefully back in a couple of months. I mean, there's no good... I don't know what the best time to do an injury is. There's no good time to do an injury. But it, it, is it one of those things where at least you've got a lot of the pre-season under your belt so that helps you, or does that all disappear in, in the, the time you're going to be out? Yeah, well, I, I missed a fair chunk of it, so uh, which was a bit disappointing for me, trying to get, get it right and then being out for a week, and that's why I think we decided to go with the surgery. Yep. Um, to get a bit For the long run, it's better for me. So, uh, yeah, it'll, it'll be... It'll be good in a couple of months, and all the pain will be gone. Everything will be gone. So, uh, yeah, it's all, all travelling well. Now it's good to hear. Free kick going to Drew Petrie, so he'll have the first shot at goal for North of the second quarter of the second half. Geelong leading by 13 points. Alan Christensen with us in commentary. We'll just have a look at this kick from Petrie, and he's got a fair bit of it, and that's through. So. Good striking in front of goal from both sides at the start of this second half. North are clearly going to be one of the teams that you're going to want to beat during the season if, you, if you're going to get the, the sort of spot you want on the ladder. Yeah, definitely. Um, I think they've showed over the last few years that they're forever improving. So we've had some really tight matches against them. So, um, yeah, they're going to, if we want to be up where we want to be, we're going to have to uh, beat teams like that. Now, Hamish McIntosh has gone to full forward and he's playing on one of his best mates, Nathan Grimer, who he used to live with who's at full back, so we'll see. There's a bit of niggle there between the boys. I think they'll have a bit of dirt on each other, so I think they're a bit more laughter than, than playing out there, I reckon. Has, uh, he, he's another one who's obviously had, you know, there's, there's a certain amount of pride as a footballer you've gotten to come across to a new club and not be able to play. Must have been a really difficult year for him. Let's, let's see if he gets in. Might jump over the top and take a hangy. <laughs> no. Oh, gee, Hawkins starting to loom and, and look really dangerous for the Cats. Cleared away well, though. For North, as uh, Corey Enright is having another stellar start to the season, gets all wrapped up. But, yeah, Hamish must be really pleased to be out there. Yeah, I think um, the crowd's appreciating him too. Uh, when he came off before, after he kicked that <laughs> goal, uh, got a nice uh, round of applause. And all the boys ran from nearly everywhere to mm. get around him. So um, we've seen what he's been through. And um, I think it was the same with Riv um, last year. Yep. He missed that first part of the year. It would have been hard for him to be trying to come back through the VFL. And we're playing some pretty good footy. So... Um, you know, they know what it's like when they when they came here. They knew they weren't just going to be walk up starts, yeah. but um, I think I think I don't think they regret coming here at mm. all. So yeah. no, well, I think Jared's look, he's looked like he's a bit fitter this year too. Jared Rivers. Yeah, he, um, he's had the full preseason, um, and yeah, so hopefully he, them back three, uh, Domsey, Harry, and, and Riv, really hold us in good stead. And I think they'll have some young blokes around them too. So. Uh, that'll take us forward as well as a club. How's the pre-season been? I know you couldn't do a lot of it, but uh, compared to previous ones, what have the boys have said in terms of you know, running and all that sort of stuff? Has it been similar? Uh, yeah, it's been similar, I think, uh, in the gym in that it's been a bit more power and, and that sort of thing. And um, we've done a lot more circuits and, and that sort of thing. So I think the boys, they look good this year. We've had a couple of pre-seasons where we've built into the year and we've gotten fitter as the year's gone on the more we play but um, I think the boys are going into this year really really fit and uh, yeah we're going to hopefully be uh, explosive at the start of games but running out games as well yep yeah well, it was an issue for the last year wasn't it at times not getting away to a great start and having to come from Difficult positions. Yeah, so I think they've, they've done a lot with training with that, where we've been starting training with high-intensity drills and um, just trying to replicate what we do in games. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, hopefully it'll pay off. I think it's paid off nearly every game we've played in the, in the NAB, Cup, uh, NAB series and yep. uh, this practice match as well. 
So Duncan gets it to Kelly off half back and Atlee slapped it on the boot. Nahas, if it sits for him, there's a real chance here. Let's see if he passes. He does try and pass. And Smith has got that covered. Low mark not paid. Mason Wood's done a couple of nice things for North. Number 32 there. What about that bloke, Corey Enright? I said before, I reckon you're just about penciling in for all Australian already from what we've seen this year. Yeah, he he just does not miss a beat, does he? No, he's unbelievable and um, doesn't miss a session either. So it's no surprise that he's up and about every year that we've seen. So uh, he's the ultimate professional. Stevie J, the penetrating handball. Don't know what he's doing up here. No. Now Lonigan in, in the in the forward 50. He started as a forward, so he should remember how to kick goals. Yeah, hopefully. Yeah, the young players have uh, really been impressive, haven't they? Um, you know, Cam Gatfrey, he now looks like a, a real established AFL player. Yeah, he, he's the one to watch, Ooh. I think. Um, his pre-season has been absolutely amazing. Um, Jordan Murdoch's another one. Just his pace and line breaking ability for us is going to be so important. So, yeah, we've got some really good young talent, but they they're not going to use the excuse as being young to to play in poor footy and the way we don't want to play. So, yep. Um, I think we've got really mature heads for young players. Has it been strange around the club not having Chappie there? Uh, yes and no, but like that's just the industry. Yep. We, we move on, and we've got we got seven, I think, seven new players this year. So. Um, Last year we only had two, so uh, you know it's yeah part of footy now. Yep. So he moved on and we moved on. But it's going to be strange to see him in an Essendon jumper. Yeah, isn't it? a bit weird. I think a bit weird for supporters seeing that loved him over so much time. So uh, no, he's obviously him around the club, and but you know it happens. Yeah, get stuffed, Tabby. That's the message. <laughs> Duncan giving away the free, and Gibson's going to take it for North at half forward. Seven points the difference. So Petrie back at full forward, Lonigan back at full back. And he's going to go super short. And Brent Harvey. Talk about blokes that keep on delivering. He's uh, he's an absolute wonder, isn't he? And that's a brilliant kick into Cunnington inside the 50. And he'll line up for goal with uh, Geelong 9660 North Melbourne 8553. Hope you're enjoying our live stream on both the North Melbourne and Geelong websites. Alan Christensen, our special guest, another couple of minutes as Cunnington lines up for North Melbourne to try and cut it back to one point. On a cool night at Geelong. And away for a behind, so it's one goal the difference. What about Tommy Hawkins? He's, uh, I think, a little manoeuvre in the first quarter and then a couple of marks. He's starting to look like he's, he's getting back to his, his fitness, best fitness. Yeah, um, a lot of, oh, ooh, a lot of uh, credit uh, has to go to Peter Stanton, the new um, physio, uh, high performance manager. He uh, has worked a lot with me and a lot with Hawk and a lot with a few of the boys. Um, just brought a new uh, perspective yep. into things and, um, you know, he, he worked out pretty quickly that Hawk didn't need surgery and, uh, which a lot of people, I think, thought that would happen. But, yep. um, yeah, certainly the outside football yeah. world were thinking that. Um, and he's uh, come back, um, and this pre-season he's nearly done everything and um, while doing that stuff with Stance. So so what sort of stuff then? What is it? Oh, it's just core a lot of, work yeah, a lot of core stuff, yep. just strengthening his back and stuff, stuff that people just don't think of, little muscles in the back. and um, Yeah, we are lucky to have Stance, I think. All right, a couple of uh, good one percenters by North have cut off the Cats and then move forward. And Mason Wood's been okay so far. We've seen him bundled over the line down in front of us here. Here's Billy Smets. Gibson, fierce at the contest. Must be a hard mindset in these sort of matches, for, particularly for the sort of mid to experienced players who want to make sure they don't get injured, but you want to get a, want to get a good, good blowout as well. Yeah, um, I, I guess... That's what's made us a, a good team over a long time, though, that whenever we go out, and uh, Scotty makes sure that uh, we go out and every game we want to win and we, we take the contest hard because um, while these games don't mean much, you've got to you know, implement what you want to do. So, uh, Has there been much change to the game plan at all over the summer? Uh, no, it's probably even got a little bit simpler, I think. Um, well, I haven't been able to do much. I've just been in with the coaches and 
um, talking with them. So they are. Uh, yeah, it's got a lot simpler for the boys. I think we'll, you'll see a, a pretty good, nice attacking game that we've always had, but yep. uh, defensively a little bit simpler for us. So, okay. um, yeah, hopefully all going well. We, we don't get scored against too much, but putting some goals on the board. Sounds good. <laughs> Just a matter of impl implementing it now. Yeah. Gibson off the left for North. Who got a nice little run of momentum here. Rivers with the diligent spoil away from right. And the ball shoots over the boundary line and out of bounds. So you reckon sort of round 10? Yeah, it's hard to say. Well, um, Dawson Simpson had the same surgery. And I don't, he was around the 12-week mark. Okay. But, he's um, a big bloke. He's a big boy. So hopefully all going well. Yeah, hopefully around halfway through the year and, and a, bit of, a bit of time probably in the VFL to get fit and, and back into it. That was a pretty unlikely turnover from Harry Taylor and it gives young McKenzie a chance to put a goal through and once again scores will be level here at Simmons Stadium so the Cats coming strongly out at the start of this third but North just hitting back at the midpoint of the term. Let's watch the kick. And he's guided it pretty skillfully through the middle so scores are level and we'll let Alan Christensen go off into the night and watch a bit more of the footy and continue on his recovery. Yeah, good luck and uh, hopefully we'll see you out there soon. Yeah, thanks sir, appreciate it. Alan Bundy Christensen joining us here up in the box as scores are level and uh, Julian the Stoop will slip back in. Cheers, mate. Be a bit careful patting him as he left. I didn't want to hurt his back, Jules. Uh, very gentle. Grew up an Essendon man too, Alan Christensen, so that hurts a little bit. <laughs> I think he's, he should have asked. His brother's coming through as well. As a talented young player. Scores level, 9-6-60. And we definitely have the close one, Jules, in the third. Did you tip this? Tip the close one. Tip the draw, actually. <laughs> so right on target. So back in the middle, Goldstein. Nice tap down, Del Santo sharked it. Kicks straight up in the air. Going in there is Zebul. He's wrapped up by Guthrie. And we'll have another bounce. Just four to the centre for the ruse. What about Harry Taylor? If uh, Rivers stands up, Lonigan stands up, can you see him spending a bit more time up foot? Yeah, I think it'll be pretty similar to the past where they like they really like to be versatile. You see Brown kick it up and whoa, he's up into the wind. He might mark his own kick. I haven't seen that since grade five. That big tall ruckman around Flora Hill Primary used to kick it and run and mark it himself. But uh, he wasn't quite able to do it. But no, I think they'll still use him as in that that when he sees the moment or when the coach sees the moment that now's the time to head down there. Um, I'd be surprised if he lines up at 4 4 too many times. Different story though, obviously, if Hawkins gets injured or something like that. So here's Harvey for the ruse. Got a one on one contest to full forward. It's right. And also, Mackie gets over the back and just dribbles through for a behind before Wright can run onto it. And the ruse back in front. 9 7 61. The Cats 9 6 60. Got caught in the net then. Right. The ball. No, the right no, right did. An unusual injury. And he was trying to throw the footy back to uh, Mackie, and by then the other blokes had got another ball out of the out of the bag and were out of the esky, and were off and, off and running. Off and running. Yeah. And played on quick with the Cats, got it to Caddy, who's got it at half back. So we go short, and he's got Guthrie. A bit of like those two. Yeah. Mops of blonde hair. Not good for commentators. Not great for commentators. So here's Ed Wright, takes it on the wing, takes a bounce, got enough pace to get away from Goldstein. Long kick inside the 50, Murdoch's there. It's a good spoil from Ferrito, and he goes out of bounds on the attacking 50 for the Cats. So it was great to chat to the players and just get that little insight into who's been good on the track, and you can tell just the appreciation he's had for some of the work the young guys have done. Pick up and under from Caddy to full forward, McCarthy outsized. Just about sneak through the legs of Ferrito if he wanted to to pick up the footy. Goes out of bounds. Have a look at him next to Tommy Hawkins. Fantastic. Fantastic. But uh, he's already shown that he's going to be a, a handful for defenders. Got a great McCarthy. Spinning move again. Atley getting it to Cunnington. He can be a dangerous for commentators as well as the ball knocked over the boundary line and out of bounds. Yeah, him and Carmichael Hunt are yes. very dangerous. Very dangerous. 
probably shouldn't be used in the same sentence, I would have thought. No, they never play on each other. So, throwing it half forward for the Cats. It's North Melbourne leading by just the one point. Bastanak in there, gets the arms free. Jared Healy found the Gold Coast Suns dangerous as well, didn't he? Really? Yeah, very dangerous. So your face was priceless that day. So, ball at half forward for North now. Taylor Hunt, Harry Taylor, and Enright share it. Little kick into the middle, and Caddy gets away. Jared, Jared was very tough to be a YouTube sensation, I can tell you that. <laughs> He's still talking about it. Probably not the way he wanted to be a YouTube sensation. So it's Duncan, little kick to half forward, pitches in front of Blitzarves. The boundary line wins. That's very enthusiastic, isn't it? The, the Geelong chance gone out. Yeah. One point down, third quarter. <laughs> Practice match, rally the troops. And plenty of numbers around the footy. Sheringham dug it out. The big door, Simpson. Roos fight amongst themselves when they finally worked it out. Thomas, they are dangerous in the way they can move the ball and the pace. It'd be, this would be for nine if there was nine in it, but it's only for one for Harvey. And North lead by two, which I think is that their biggest lead of the that match. That is their biggest lead. Which is not a really big lead. Not massive, no. You wouldn't say they're running away with it. So Mackie oh, for the Cats. That oh, look at is that kick. as bad as McIntosh is in the first term. And that actually went through for a goal. So let's Lindsay Thomas in. He can't quite gather. And Mackie gets a chance to... I think Lindsay's done a fair bit of running in the lead. I'd be happy to play by the look of him. <laughs> Make amends. Mackie. That's a better looking kick off the boot. A good ball from McKenzie on end right. In goes Thurlow. Only got one for two high. The umpire missed it. The locals thought it was a free kick. Barco. Shuffles it out, in goes Del Santo and Guthrie. The boundary line wins, and it's throwing about 60 metres out. You can see Lindsay, just at the, Thomas, just at the top of your screen. He's moved about two and a half metres. He's spent. This is the end of that last contest. And it's up and about now. McIntosh kicks it out of the ruck. <laughs> All the skills. Brown going hard the wrong way. Barco, clever little handball. OK, it's gone over the line. Missed the target, but the idea was very, very good. He was about to... Get it back from Sheringham. Oh, well fended down from uh, McIntosh. Here's Zeebel. Now Atley screwed it back to Enright. Quick give. Stokes. Stevie J. Cats. Oh, that wasn't so smart. That's like, a great kick. I lie because he was able to put it into the spot for Mitch Duncan to run into and of course the grand plan was that he would play on, get the mark but he just overstepped the mark a fraction Blitzar's filled them all and now Mitch Brown at the way of the alternative and he takes the mark hopefully Blitzar hasn't hurt himself Mitch Brown goes, oh back to Stevie J he makes a meal of it again, looks for a free <laughs> he won't get any freeze like that the umpires are right on, on to him these days Oh, there's a terrific mark for Josh Caddy. Oh, he's been very good tonight. And he's going to be a really very huge pickup for the Cats. Taylor Hunt. Goes back to Harry Taylor. Yeah. He had a bit of breeze behind him. He could have just about kicked it from there. Out of bounds. So 9 8 62, as you can see, to 9 6 60 getting towards the end of the third quarter. That's great. That's why Stevie J is great, isn't it? Great kick, played on when he shouldn't have, <laughs> dropped the chest mark and then stayed for a free kick all in the space of 30 <laughs> seconds. Never a dull moment when Stevie J is around the footy. Is North break here from halfback, back to see, see if we can put that on the couch on Monday night. On the couch? Definitely on the couch. Or 360. All, all, all 360. So Stokes gathers for the Cats, off to Enright. He's had plenty of the footy back to Taylor Hunt and there's no one behind Harry Taylor at centre half back so he just chips in the middle to Holland Smith kick the goal in the opening term he wears the number of my favourite player growing up George Holland Smith Darren Forsman no it was before Darren Forsman that's a good get by you uh, it was Nan Kerbis yeah Bruce, Bruce Nan Kerbis yep I thought you were a bit younger than that Hutto no he was an electrician so I wanted to be an electrician growing up <laughs> thankfully for a lot of homes out there I didn't become an electrician not a handyman? No. Turning the switch on and off is about where yeah, it Yeah, I struggle changing a light globe. So Holland Smith, about 65 metres out from goal, goes up towards Big McIntosh, pushed under the footy by Goldstein. Eventually comes to the back to Atley. 
And a bit of pressure. Shares it with Thompson and back to Atley. Now he gets the skates on. Long ball looking for Curry on the wing. He's going to go over his head, but it might actually suit right. Goes in at the back. Wrapped up in a tackle. It's good play by the Cats on the outer wing. Wright's actually been all right for them tonight. We've sort of had a bit of a joke about him being the target a couple of times, but he's been really lively down there. He played that role for most of last year and probably uh, you know, didn't have he's a great, great season after year. looking all right the year before. But um, looks like he's whatever he's done, he's, uh, he's looking pretty sharp. Yeah, he's got plenty of talent. He's a handy size. Nice little ball around the corner from Thomas. Found Harvey at half forward. Off to Cunnington, who's been pretty good tonight. Spears the ball in, looking for Big Curry, who gets down. Couldn't quite take it. A bit hot for Curry, that hot. I was waiting for that. So McMillan. Still a chance here for North inside 50. They get it outside 50 eventually to Zeebel, who just chips wide. And Cunnington's got it, but he's still probably just outside scoring range. Not to kick from about 55, but he goes short, looking for Wells. But Big McIntosh gets back and chops it off for the Cats. Cats just playing the possession game here. North have pushed forward with a lot of their numbers. You can see them well, on the wider shot. You can see them just streaming back down the ground. Cats on a slow play here, switching. So they're just stretching North a little bit, although the ball took a little while to get where it was meant to get. And that'll give North time to cover some bases. Rivers decides to trust his kicking skills, and Blitzer is a good man. Now, it's, you can see the advice from Stevie J was just to wait calm down and now you can wait a bit longer because it's three-quarter time here at Simmons Stadium and not much has changed since halftime when scores were level. North have won the quarter and therefore are in front. They're 9-8-62, they lead Geelong 9-6-60. With the goal kickers, here's Julian Destoe. Goal kickers, Tommy Hawkins has three for the Cats, the rest are singles. McIntosh, Murdoch, Duncan, Guthrie, Hall and Smith and sharing them off for the Ruse. Two apiece to Wright and Petrie singles to McKenzie. Del Santo, Thompson, Harvey and Mullet. All right, we will uh, take a break. We'll come back very, very shortly and give you some of the, the key stats up to three-quarter time. In fact, our stats man is racing them in as we speak. And uh, for Geelong, Caddy's had 24. Johnson's had 22 and a few other things. Duncan's had 22. 21 to Kelly, 21 to Taylor, 20 to Mackey, 20 to Stokes. 20 to Enright and 17 to Lonigan. And for the Kangaroos, 22 to Cunnington, 17 to Del Santo, 17 to Harvey, 16 to Atley, 16 to Zeebel, 15 to Thompson and 14 to Mullet. Just quickly, some of the kids uh, or the recruits. Curry was a sub early. He's only had the three disposals. Goldstone only three. Tippett just a couple. Uh, Nahas has had 10 disposals. McKenzie's had 10 and Woods had 12. And for the Cats, some of their younger ones, Thurlow has had seven disposals, Murdoch four, Sheringham six has done some good things around the ball, Holland Smith 12, and Guthrie's had 14 for the Cats. It's three-quarter time, so we'll take a short break and come back with the last quarter. 